Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. I am joined by Tess Wheeler, and we're going to talk about how Tess has used Off to Class to help her become a successful online teacher. So, Tess, it's uh, so great to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for asking me. Absolutely. So, Tess, would you mind just starting off by giving us a little bit of background and, and maybe in about two or three minutes, minutes telling us, you know, taking us from where you got started teaching online, a quick walk through the history to kind of where you are now. Yeah, certainly, Chris. Yeah. Uh, well, I just did my CELTA last summer, um, so I was quite a novice teacher. And I started out teaching in the classroom last summer at International House um, in the city where I live. Um, and then at the end of the summer, the contract came to an end and it was a case of, well, what do I do now? I can't travel. I have a daughter in school here in the UK. Um, so the obvious answer was online English teaching. Um, I joined all of the usual Facebook groups, went online to see what I could find. And like most people, the thing that came to the fore was all of the Chinese companies teaching Chinese children English. Um, so that's where I started out. Um, I had a great sort of mentoring program with a teacher online at first. Um, and she put me forward to a company she was working for. And I started with them, I would say last October. Um, and they offered me the role of a demo teacher. So the salary was a little bit higher. You were guaranteed a certain amount of money every week and you taught a number of lessons and that was great. And for me, that was a great beginning of online teaching. Um, it just gave me the experience to be on a webcam and to sit at a desk, talk on a microphone. Um, and it sort of taught me the necessary skills to teach online. But it was within a nice framework. Um, I really enjoyed that for several months, but I did find that it was quite restrictive um, teaching for a company. Um, the back to back lessons that you have with sort of a three minute gap between them. It was quite exhausting. Um, so I enjoyed it, but I was I always had it in my mind that I would like to do something slightly different. Um, that company's demo program actually came to an end at the end of February this year and they offered me regular teaching work with them but I decided that was the time to make a break. Um, I'd already signed up with italki some time before and then I'd come across off to class at the beginning of January and that had been my major concern really how I would find lesson material to teach with and once I found off to class and italki that seemed like the perfect combination for me and that's when I started teaching adults in about February March of this year. Okay so one thing that I really didn't even know is just how fast all of this unfolded. So we're, we're talking about in one year you, you're freshly celted, you're, yes. in a, you're in a classroom, you yes. do a summer in the classroom, summer ends, you take on one of the positions working for a Chinese company teaching children, you do that for a certain amount of time. And then yeah. after that, and then just for after a few months of that, you decided to kind of go it alone, so to speak. Absolutely. Yes, that's exactly how it was. So I only did myself to last June. I had a few weeks in the classroom getting some real life experience. And then it's all been online since then. And I just find since really March of this year, so from March through to July, it's really built and built. Um, and I think I did, um, probably 40 lessons in March, 50 lessons in April. Um, and then I think in June, I was up to 95 lessons or something like that on italki in June. Okay. So it has all come about in the last year, yeah. Okay, and, and so just for those who may be unfamiliar, italki is one of the uh, ESL marketplaces where you can host yourself as a, as a teacher profile. Yes, it's basically so it puts you in touch with students, it puts students in touch with teachers, not just for English, but for lots of different languages. So it's more of a, as you say, more of a marketplace. Uh, people look at your profile and then they see if they want to take lessons with you. And usually you give them a trial lesson at a slightly reduced rate, but you still charge for it. Um, and then they can sign up to a package of lessons with you after that. Sure. Okay. And one thing you touched on, which I think a lot of people would be nervous about at the idea of going it alone, you know, because I, I see that there's kind of two things. Number one, the first thing is if I go it alone, where, where do I get students? And so Absolutely. going to a marketplace, you know, that can help with that. But the second yes. thing is that if you go on your own, suddenly you, the, all those materials that you've been using to teach, those are gone. 
and, and this is kind of kind of where off to class comes in. So, so how do you use off to class to help bridge this gap? Yeah, absolutely. As I say, they were my two big concerns, where to find students, where to find material. So finding material on off to class has just been fantastic. Um, I use off to class in almost every lesson. Uh, with the student. So um, the most popular ones for me are actually the speaking activities because I find that most of my students are sort of B2, C1 level. So the the lessons on speaking are just fantastic. They're such interesting topics, so thought provoking. And I find that my students really, really enjoy doing something different from the usual sort of what are your hobbies, where do you work, how many children do you have, where are you going on holiday this year. We actually get our teeth into some really interesting topics. We've done women's rights, environmentalism, um, you know, poverty, gun control, all sorts of really interesting stuff. So the speaking lessons are a really, really big thing for me. Um, I also use the grammar lessons because no matter how high level the student is, they usually want to have some grammar refresher. So the, the grammar lessons on off to class are fantastic. Uh, um, and it gives them sort of real practice there using the grammar. So they are my two most used. I also use the reading lessons. And I've started using the step-by-step -step curriculum as well, which is fantastic because it sort of takes the guesswork out for you. You can use their sort of um, off to classes step by step guide, what you should be going through in what order. And the students really love that as well. So it's, it's been game changing, I think, off to class for me. OK, all right. Let's come back to that in a little bit. And let's talk a little bit more about your transition from working for a company to working for yourself. So you mentioned a little earlier that you said, you know, I was offered a, t a regular role after you said you worked kind of doing the, the sample lessons or something. Yeah, like that. that's right. Yes. And so what made you say, because a lot of people are just looking for, for work with a company, you had a chance to, to continue working with this company teaching these children. Sure, sure. What, yeah. made, what made you say, I don't want to do that? Um, I think... Um, I wanted to be my own boss. Um, I didn't want to be tied to the peak hours in China, for one thing. Um, not that they're bad in the UK. I mean, for me, it was between sort of 10 in the morning or 11 in the morning till one in the afternoon. So that was quite convenient. But it was the quick turnaround time between lessons. It was using someone else's lesson material without a lot of flexibility to add or to change. Um, and, and for me, I just felt I would like also to try teaching adults rather than children uh, so all of those things sort of combined okay now I've never worked with a uh, one of the companies like this we're doing lessons for children but I, I just through social media and from what I've heard I, it seems like there's a lot of horror stories like did you see any of that or any negative things happen to you or people that you work with yeah, well, I mean, the company that I worked for, and I don't know whether I should name them here, but they were they were a good company. They've been around a lot of years, um, and they were they had good training to start with. They had pretty good IT support online, so that was really useful. Um, I found that uh, they, they were very demanding, um, which is not a bad thing, but um, they really would push you to add extra hours, um, you know, and it was very, as I say, very quick turnaround and feedback and all that sort of thing. But that was okay. If you are going to work for a company, you have to accept what they need you to do. And that's what I did while I was doing it. Um, but for me personally, it was that lack of control. Um, for instance, it used to be that you had to open up 10 peak hours a week um, and they could be any day you wanted. Um, and what happened was, I know a lot of friends who I had working on that site worked from Monday to Friday because they had children. So they needed their weekends to be free. And then suddenly overnight, this company brought in a new rule. One of those days had to be Saturday or Sunday. And that was just an overnight decision. So that's a game changer for some people. Um, then I think the thing that changed for me or when, when they brought the demo teaching to an end, um, I actually had a full schedule for the week ahead for demos. And then suddenly they all just disappeared. Um, and we didn't hear anything about it. And then after sort of half a day or so, news started to filter through in a Facebook group that maybe they were suspending this demo teaching program. That was the first we heard of it. And then we actually got an official email from them telling us that was the case. Now, 
to their credit, they offered me regular teaching work and I could have stayed on with them. But I think that brought home to me how out of your control it is. If they change the rules, they can do it at a moment's notice and there really isn't anything you can do about it. So yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. You're yeah. At the end of the day, you're signed on to someone else's platform, someone else's rules. Yeah. And, yeah. If, you know, basically, you know, the decisions that they make for, are in their best interests and that may not be what's best for you. Yeah, absolutely right. So for me, that was what made me decide it's now or never. It's time to go it alone. Um, and as I said, the, the, the main thing was finding lesson material. But, but once, once I'd found that there was lesson material of such a high quality out there, then it was a no-brainer for me. Okay. Fantastic. And it seems like you were able to transition yourself pretty quickly to joining this, this teacher marketplace. I talk to you as one of several that exist. You seems like you had a pretty quick transition from being new on the platform to, you know, teaching what you have now, which is what, like, you know, several every day. Yes, yes, absolutely. In fact, now I shut my, I, I, I don't accept all the lessons that I could do. I will only accept it to a maximum of seven, more than seven lessons a day. I just find it's too tiring at maybe my age. <laughs> of course. <I'm> so... <laughs> it's too much. Um, so once I've got a certain number of bookings, I'll, I'll just shut the rest of my schedule down. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I signed on with Off to Class in January. Um, okay. And I watched very nervously to see how many students I would actually get on italki. And January and February were quite slow. But at that point, I was still working with the Chinese company, so it didn't matter too much. And then come March, I just opened my timetable up completely and found that doing cheaper trial lessons um, seem to work for me um, and really I, I remember watching one of your videos and actually having a coaching session with you when I joined off to class um, which was just fantastic it really showed me really helped me a lot I think the, the beauty of it is if you do um, a trial lesson for somebody uh, and then they sign up with you for a package of lessons that was that was how I found that my student numbers grew and actually I found that having watched your video with um, some good tips about how to get those sort of conversions um, I'm, I'm making sort of when I open my books up I, I get about 75 to 80 percent of the people that I have trial lessons with actually the, then do go on to buy a package with me so for me I'm not a salesperson um, but if I'm getting sort of 75 80 percent conversion rates through uh, it's fantastic it's so, excellent yeah. And, and for me, I'm sure a big part of that is actually the placement test, because um, I think it makes you look very professional. If the okay. first so, so in case people are unfamiliar, could you, could you ex explain that a little in a little more detail? Sure. Yes, certainly. So on off to class, there are sort of grammar placement tests. So when a, co a student first contacts you, you can get their email from them and then you can set them the grammar placement test for them to do in their own time. And I would always get them to do that before our trial lesson. Um, and then in the trial lesson, I go through the grammar results with them and I show them the problems that they've had and the, the corresponding lessons that help them to fix those problems. And, and I think for most students, they're looking for a teacher who is actually going to take control and they want to know that you've got a plan. They want to know that you've got something you're going to follow. And they can see that on the screen. Uh, they can see the actual course of lessons that you will do with them. Um, so that's what I always do in my trial lessons is give them the placement results and then chat to them about what they can expect from me in future lessons. Uh, I don't do a particularly hard sell, but they seem to sign up. So I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's great. And, and just to kind of add a little more detail. So off to class has a placement test where before you ever meet a student, all you need is an email address. You can send yeah. them uh, the placement test. They can take the placement test. And one of the really great things about it is that then when you have the first online meeting with a student, you can say, hello, new student. Well, now that you've taken this test, I, I can see this. Even though I'm just meeting you right now, I already know this is where you struggle. And now because you've taken the placement test and the placement test matches up the errors to the lessons in the off to class lesson library, you can say to the student, I, here's your learning plan. We're going to do these lessons in this order and it's going to be very simple. So in, I think what makes a really big difference, and I've talked about this in the past, is a lot of teachers will they say, oh, well, we'll talk about whatever you want. You know, but you, you said students don't really know what they want to talk about. They want a teacher that's going to 
That's and right. Help. That's right. And they will say to you, you know, you're, you're the teacher. Uh, I want you to tell me what to do. Um, and I will always give my students a choice, as I said earlier, that um, a lot of my students are higher level. So I'll usually say to them, OK, so I'll have a speaking class today. Would you like to do A or B? and give them a choice between those two things. And, and that usually works really, really well. And also, I sometimes start a lesson with 20 minutes of grammar, use one of the grammar lessons, uh, and then go into 40 minutes of conversation class. And that's a really good combination. So it's nice that you're absolutely free to mix things up and use whatever lessons you want, whenever you want. It, it really works. Tess, what advice would you give to a newly certified teacher who wants to teach online in the most expedient uh, way possible uh, and to just kind of get up and running in as quickly as they can? Uh, I think the main advice is not to be afraid of it, really to give it a try, just to get out there, put yourself out there and try. And I feel like if I can do it, most people can do it. I really do. And I think that the two major things are to think about where you're getting your students from, where you're getting your material from. And for me, as I said, off to class for the material. And for me, italki works as a platform. So, um, you know, give it a go. What have you got to lose? That would be my advice. That's great. And I think, I think a lot of times what I see with new online teachers is there's this kind of false dichotomy of choices where they say, I either must work for a company where the pay is not going to be as great. I'm not going to be in control. You know, I'm going to be subject to, to these rules and, and possible changes like you mentioned. Or the other thing people think is that if I don't do that, then I guess I need to have a website, you do paid advertising, you start yes. blogging or make YouTube videos. And, and you, people say, gosh, that sure does sound like a lot of work. And because yeah. it, really, yeah. it really is. So I think yeah. people a lot of times don't think about this, this middle way. And this is the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that's that's absolutely right. For me, when I researched into it all, it seemed to me there were the, the Chinese companies, which are sort of very regimented and very organized for you. Then, as you've just described, your own website, your own advertising, your own material. And then the middle way that I've managed to find is what I've described to you. But I, I think that the, the problem with your own website and your own material, and, and, you know, that's something I'm looking at for the future, sort of my own website to get students because you know for example italki have introduced some changes recently it does make people feel a little bit nervous when things change nobody likes it um, we're sort of all keeping an eye on it to see what will happen but for me I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket I did that with the Chinese company you know italki is fantastic for me at the moment but I would like to think about having my own website and advertising in the future but the problem with having to do all of that work and the problem with having to design all those lessons is you're not actually earning any money while you're doing that quite often. Right. All of those hours that you put into building your website, especially if you're not a techie person, and I'm not, right. um, and all of those hours designing lessons, you're not teaching and you're not getting paid for it. And that's, mm. what, you know, I love teaching, please don't get me wrong, but also I need to earn some money from it. That's why of I'm course. here. Of course. And, and, and if you're not, you're not earning money for time that you're spent prepping or building a website or doing any of those things. Yes. And, and I, and I Absolutely. to kind of characterize it in general terms, right? It, it doesn't matter what kind of company it is, right? Whether you're teaching children, whether you're teaching adults, because I've worked for, I mean, I got started like, like, like a lot of other people. I got started working for companies. Now, this was before this kind of boom of teaching Chinese children. So I was working for European companies teaching adults, but it's the same story. And you're playing by someone else's rules. And I think too, when, when you talk about going to the marketplace route, right? Italki is one among many, but yes. again, it's, it's the same thing. Yes. At the end of the day, you have a lot more control because no one is telling you certain standards to teach. No one is telling you when you can be available or unavailable. And no one is telling you what to charge, right? You can decide you want to charge $10 an hour. You can decide you want to charge $60 an hour. It's entirely up to you. That's but, absolutely right. But at the end of the day, it's still someone else's platform, right? Like if, yes. if the platform you're working on makes rule changes, those might have unintended consequences or something you weren't anticipating. So yes. I also agree with you. I think it's a great idea to kind of have that going so that mm -hmm. there's income that's coming yes. in. 
And while that's happening, you can build the website because it was, I think you know people don't dispute is that when it comes to having a website and an online teaching business, sure, the sky is the limit in terms of what you can do, in terms of its flexibility, in terms of income potential, so many things. But it does take a, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of consistency before that starts to happen that isn't necessarily being compensated, right? It's like you've got to really build something that is, gonna, you know, and, and I think of it like any other business, right? It's not any easier or more difficult than any other type of business. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's great what you're doing that you say, okay, I, I really didn't like working for a company. I found it to be too restrictive. But, and so instead I'm going to work for a marketplace, which gives me more control. And instead of working for a company, you know, the main benefit is I've got the material. Now you're getting your material, your placement test, your student management from off to class. And then at the same time, now you can sort of work on focusing on something like that. That's right. That's right. It's been the perfect combination for me. And when I think where I was a year ago, when I'd only just finished the CELTA, and wondering where I was going to teach, how I was going to teach. It's amazing to think how far I've come in the last year. It's been phenomenal. Tess, it's been fantastic to see how well you've done in the past year. And, and part of the reason that I wanted to sit down and have this conversation with you is because I know of so many teachers that, that sometimes feel stuck, right? Because they, they try one thing or another, or they can't seem to break out of a, a something that, to, that really satisfies them. And so to see you in a year's time, get to a place where you say, I'm turning off my availability. I don't need any more students. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. And I think it's something that a lot of teachers really would, would benefit from. No, so that's great. Okay, let's get really practical to finish up. Um, okay. If, if someone wants to teach online, you know, what are the steps that you recommend that, that they take in order to, to save them the most amount of headache? Yeah, um, I think the first thing to do if you want to teach online is um, to think about what qualifications you've got to start with. I mean, I did the CELTA because <laughs> I wanted to feel really confident about my teaching. So um, I decided to go to the, go the CELTA route. But I know that a lot of people will do a TEFL course and you can do a TEFL course reasonably cheaply um, and that's fine. And just because you've got a qualification doesn't necessarily make you a great teacher. So it's horses for courses. You have to find the right qualification. Um, and then then I think really it's about getting you your basic hardware and software that you need. So you can use packages like um, you can use Zoom, you can use Skype, you need a headset or a good microphone, you need your webcam, you need a sort of an Ethernet connection so your Wi-Fi is not letting you down all the time. Those are the practical things you need. And then the next things are your students and your material. And, and once you decide which marketplace or forum suits you, go for it. Um, and you'll find fantastic materials such as off to class. Um, there's loads of stuff on the internet so I think it's just getting all those things in place and then you're ready to go fantastic well Tess thank you so much for taking this time to answer my questions I feel like this is going to be really helpful for a lot of other teachers I hope so I really hope so I've really enjoyed it I've really enjoyed the last year um, I'm so glad I've made this change it's made such a difference to my life being able to work from home and be my own boss so um, thanks for all your help on the journey as well and, and you know thanks to off to class for for their fantastic lesson material so glad it's been helpful Tess lovely thank you thank okay you. have a good one thanks bye now bye